Welcome back to FunQuest. And today, we're going to be building a trebuchet out of PVC pipe. A trebuchet is a medieval instrument of war used to launch projectiles at your opposition. We're going to be building a trebuchet which will launch golf balls. So let's get started. You will need the following materials. Approximately 24 feet of half inch PVC pipe. This is much cheaper to buy in bulk, so you may want to buy three 10 foot pieces about 20 inches of 1 inch PVC pipe, a piece of cardboard or a thin board with the dimensions of 7 by 27 and a half inches, a number of half inch PVC joints including four cross joints, one T joint, seven three-way corner joints, 435 degree angle joints, seven 90 degree elbow joints, and one straight angle joint. 11 zip ties, about 60 inches of string, 10 pounds of weights, I have two 5 pound weights here, a PVC pipe cutter, a drill, measuring tape, scissors, about 4 feet of thin rope, you could also get away with using the string, 6 medium sized nails, a hot glue gun, an old t-shirt, a golf ball, or several, and seven inches or so of half inch wooden dowel. You could also get away with using a pencil. Now we're ready for construction. Let's begin with the base. Here are all the measurements. All the pieces marked with a red A are cut 16 and a half inches, a green B, one and a half inches, a blue C, six and a half inches, and the yellow D, four inches. Once all the pieces are cut and in place, you connect them together tightly. To make it easier to disassemble, I'm fastening my board with zip ties, which can be cut later. If you'd like yours to be more permanent, you can fasten your board or cardboard with something like Gorilla Glue. The final addition to the base is a piece for the release mechanism, which you'll see in action later. Here are the measurements. Now we'll build the two supports which hold the pivot. Here are the measurements and the pieces. And this piece will need to be doubled. For the arm, you'll need a piece of half inch PVC pipe that measures 27 and a half inches. The first step is to drill a small hole about a centimeter down from the top. Thread the hole with your string tie it off, but don't cut the string yet. Pull the string taut down the length of the PVC and leave a couple inches at the end before cutting. Now we'll move to the hook at the end of the throwing arm. This piece holds the other end of the sling until the payload is released. You can see here I've used a piece from a five gallon bucket handle. I used this piece because of its natural curvature you want it to slant upwards as it comes out. You could also use a nail and bend it. Hot glue the hook to the inside of the PVC pipe directly above where you tied off the string. I added a lot of extra hot glue just to make sure it held in place. The pouch for the payload will be made from an old t-shirt. I sketched the design of the pouch around the golf ball, seven and a half inches long and one and a half inches wide at either end. Connect the two ends. The shape should somewhat resemble an oval. Fold two corners on one end together and then puncture them with a nail at the same time. Take the end of the string thread it through the two holes and tie it off. Repeat this process on the other side of the pouch with a new string. Don't cut the string yet.
the pouch should now hold the golf ball snugly inside. Fold the pouch over itself and line it up with the end of the PVC. Then pull the string taut back over the length of the PVC and leave 5 inches before cutting. Take the end of the string and tie it off into a loop. When pulled taut as before, the loop should line up exactly with the end of the PVC. The next section of the arm is made from 1 inch PVC and has a hole for the pivot as well as a hole for the counterweight. This section is thicker so that it's wide enough for the holes, plus it's much more durable. You don't want the entire arm to be this thick though because then your launch would be less efficient. You want the holes to be 7 8 inches wide so that the half inch PVC can be snug yet spin freely inside. You want the holes cut as perpendicular as possible and you also want them to be lined up as perfectly as possible. The length of the whole piece is 11 inches. From the left side to the center of the first hole is 3.5 inches. From the center of the first hole to the center of the second hole is 6.5 inches. And from the center of the second hole to the right side should be 1 inch. This is the straight angle joint. When held up to an untampered joint, you can see that I've made some minor modifications. I had to sand down the outside a little bit so that it would fit inside of the 1 inch PVC piece. I also had to sand out the inside ridge so that the 1 half inch arm piece could slide all the way in about 3 inches down. Now the two arm pieces will be connected with the straight angle joint. I used a hammer here to pound down the joint just to make sure it was nice and snug. This piece here is the pivot which measures 11 and a half inches. Next, you'll need two pieces of 1 inch PVC measuring 4 and a quarter inches each. These pieces will essentially act as washers along the pivot and keep the swing arm from moving from side to side. The final piece is the counterweight. From the half inch PVC, you'll need two pieces that measure 3 inches and two pieces that measure 5 inches. You'll also need four corner joints and four nails. In order to prevent the weights from pulling the PVC out of the joints, I drilled holes all the way through the corner joint and PVC after connecting them. I then hammered nails through and clipped them with bolt cutters. An alternative to this process could be applying PVC adhesive, but it is important that they stay secure so the weight does not come off. Finally, the counterweights are attached. Two corner pieces should fit snugly against the weights to keep them from jostling around. The arm section is now complete. The final piece is the other part of the release mechanism. I cut a 7 inch section from the half inch dowel. I then drilled a hole that was just big enough to slide a nail and a zip tie through. I then tied my rope to the loop of zip tie. This piece will hold the swing arm in position until you are ready to launch. With all sections complete, the trebuchet can now be assembled. There are some key aspects of the trebuchet that need to be observed in order to maximize its launching power. First, the long arm should be about four times the length of the short arm. Next, the long arm should be the same length as the sling. And finally, the ideal ratio of counterweight to payload is 133 to 1. With all these components in place, all you need is gravity. Gravity pulls down on the counterweight, creating potential energy or stored energy. As the counterweight falls, that potential energy is transferred to the payload in the form of kinetic energy or the energy associated with movement. And that concludes our trebuchet tutorial. If you want to see this thing in action, be sure to check out my next video where we siege a Lego castle. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.